is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the September 21st, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. Well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can always go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. But inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got most of the U.S. indices trading to the upside. The Dow is up 113 points. She's trading out at 34.083. The S&P is up 12 at 43.70. NASDAQ, 156 points. Russell's up 5. Semi's 15. Trannies are off 30 points. New York Stock Exchange up 67. You've got uh, gold up 13 bucks. Silver, 43 pennies. Lights, we crude 16 cents. Leading the charge dollar-wise to the upside. You've got AutoZone up 59 bucks. That's a big move. That's nearly 4%. Upstart Holdings, 31 bucks, 11%. Monday.com up 24 bucks on a Tuesday at 7%. Alphabet is up 21. Hellbiz is up 136%, uh, 19 buck Rooney's. They must have cured something. RBC Bearings Inc., that's the big loser to the downside, down 32 bucks or 15%. Bill.com Holdings is off 17 bucks. BlackRock 13. Uh, Carvana off seven, that's 2%. And Charter Communications down seven bucks. That's about 1% to the downside. So let's do this. We've got a couple of questions that have come in. Then we'll go to the markets. That way, I just want to get, 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 get through these. Um, here in the first question coming in from Tim. It's one of the stocks that are moving this morning. That is in mode, I N M D. Tim writes in, I'm looking for a long entry in in mode. Well, that day has passed you, unless you're going to go chase this. Can you please take a look at the daily and weekly support resistance levels for a possible entry point? So we can see this has been a rocket ship. And uh, so, with regard to where would a entry point be in this, I, the, the support area. Would you'd have to go back since price trade about the top of the daily and weekly profiles out here. You'd have to say that the first area on a pullback might be between 118 and 127. Let's pull over the white background charts out here, see if there's anything else that we might be able to provide to uh, Tim. But this is a rocket ship. The rocket ship on the daily time frame does not show a topping pattern per se. Let me see. Where's this wave seven coming from? It's in black. Where is that coming from, ABC? Yeah, no real topping signal that I see, so this should continue higher. How about a weekly basis? Weekly, you're in bar number eight of a TD9 count. That says there could be a top this week, next week, or the week after. And no topping signal on the monthly, so I'd say it's not going to be this week for the a weekly time frame. So I don't know. You know, 141.88, it's oscillator and change line. That might be an entry price. I'd have to say an entry price would really be looking at a short-term time frame chart and trying to find some type of bottoming signal out there. So, Tim, uh, this one has uh, left the uh, gate. It left quite a while ago, and uh, tough for me to give you a reliable entry. We'd have to see this thing pull back, and if you do see that, why don't you ring me then? 
and we'll take a look at INMD and uh, see what kind of messages it is providing to us. Next question coming in from Michael P. Michael wants to take a look at ticker symbol LCID. He's in this with calls, wants to add this to his IRA. This is trading up at 2637. It's inside a bullish weekly profile above the top of the uh, daily. So if price can clear 2981, this should then run to the 3745 level. Let's pull over LCID. That is the Lucid group out here. And on the daily time frame, you're looking for to add. So this says, hey, hold your horses here. Today is the day following bar number nine. So it's the potential for a top out here. The cool thing about this, Michael, is that if whatever today's high is, and I don't know what it's going to end up being, but whatever today's high is, if we see a close above that tomorrow, that tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside out there. Um, you know, I know you're looking to add this to your IRA, but it's a TD9 count top, and so it says, hey, wait for this to pull back. Let's see if we get a topping signal. Maybe tomorrow we look at it. On the weekly basis, what do we have out here? Nothing more than what I've already shared with you there. Short-term time frame charts, not really necessary for us to take a look at out here um at this stage so your questions where you wanted to really be able to add this uh like that remember what do you think uh, of the chart the chart looks great um it just got that td9 count top to uh, take a look at and uh, so let's revisit this either tomorrow wednesday or on thursday michael please write back to me so uh, thank you very much and a hey, best of luck to you on this uh, trade you're in a good spot as we speak right now and we'll get some more information uh come tomorrow i didn't see a topping signal on the 30 minute chart out there in case you were wondering why I just simply, you know, went past that chart. So that takes care of the questions that we've got so far in the uh, queue out here. Now let's go to the general markets and see what they're doing. We'll begin by taking a look at the daily equity futures contracts. Now, inside the ES, the NQ, really each of these, they all have A to B equals CD patterns to the downside. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those just simply because they kind of clutter the charts out there. And those uh, A to B equals CD patterns have not been confirmed. They could be by day Zen. And in order for that to happen, we need to see some type of bullish reversal candles. That is not what they are showing right now. Today is just showing inside bars for all three of the equity futures contracts. So what I've learned about inside bars is they typically represent that the direction of the current trend will continue. Now, I say it will continue until it generates some kind of bottom signal. So that could be signaling to you and I that tomorrow, today, the next day, that the ES Mini goes back and retargets the bottom of that weekly profile that it tested and rejected yesterday, 43.12. Inside the NQ, got right down to the bottom of its weekly profile, and that's at 14802. Now, the ES and NQ, as we speak, have not generated a change in trend signal. That's different inside the Dow. The Dow is below the bottom of its weekly profile, 34,276. It doesn't really matter where the YM is trading at 1.13 in the afternoon on Tuesday. It matters where it's trading come the close on Friday. And if there's a close below the bottom of that weekly profile, that suggests a change in trend. You'd like to see it happen for all four of the indices or equity futures contracts out there, because if you don't have a unanimous decision, well, guess what? You don't have a unanimous decision. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, what did it do yesterday? It got down, tested, and rejected the bottom of its weekly profile as well. So again, price is likely to target those levels. Here are the weekly profiles just to kind of clean things up so that you can see what's going on. And you can clearly see here the Dow Equity Future contract being below the bottom of that weekly profile. Why is that important? Well, one, we have to understand or we should understand where support and resistance is. But this is really the reason why when you take a look at all four of the Equity Futures contracts out here. And uh, so we come back to this break. We'll take a look at this and, of course, anything else that you would like or almost anything else that you'd like. Steve Roach with TFNN. Be back in a few. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, 
is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE, and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So we've had a little technical difficulty during that uh, breakout there. I uh, hope everybody can hear me. I think that you can. Uh, but uh, we need to get those charts uh, probably posted back inside the uh, Tiger's Den out there. So uh, I don't know if uh, you guys in the den, girls in the den, can uh, see uh, the uh, chart that I have on my screen. I'm hoping that you can. I hate to kind of go through it if you can't out there. Can you give me a high sign? Anybody in any event, the chart that is up on the screen, it's uh, four black background charts out there. You've got the NQ in the upper left, the ES in the upper right, the Dow in the lower left, and the Russell 2000 in the uh, lower right. And uh, here, what we're showing are uh, the uh, blue lines are the bottom of the daily profiles, and the green lines are the bottom of the weekly profile. So, great, thank you in the uh, production uh, room. So, everybody can see the charts out here. Now, I'm just going to simply expand out the Dow equity future contract. And just to pull it back a bit. In order to get a change in trend signal, much like we did back in uh, February of 2020, what you need to see is a close below both of those, both the daily and the weekly profiles out there. So there's a question inside the Tigers. I'm going to read it to you. And it is, uh, Steve, uh, can you envision the ES Mini rally again into the 4400-4425 zone after the uh, FOMC announcement tomorrow at 2 p.m.? So... Here's how I'm going to answer that uh, question. Well, we're going to go explore that as a possibility. So what would you need to see out here? Well, one of the things, if tomorrow before 2 o'clock, John, uh, the YM is trading back above its weekly profile of 34,276, that might be a signal because that would be telling us that the break to the downside, the change in trend, the potential change in trend break to the downside, uh, perhaps was a false break. So that would be one of the things that I would be looking at out there. No audio. Now, that is a major problem, Dan. That means my lips are moving and nobody can hear what I'm saying. How about in uh, Tiger TV? Mike is off. That's not good. Mike is on. How about that, Dan? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I hope so. 
And uh, so, geez, I hate to go through all this, but uh, I think we have to. So, okay, thank you, Mr. Bill. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get, just going to restart it uh, from the uh, top out here. And, you know, on the count of three. Uh, okay, I'm just kidding. So the, the question that uh, that we're going to take a look at out here, this is coming in from John inside the Tiger's Den, and it basically says this. Can we envision the ES Mini rallying into the 4400, 4425 zone after the 2 p.m. FOMC announcement? That is tomorrow afternoon out there. Now, so the first thing that I suggested, so we're looking at a chart here, a change in trend chart out here. Uh, this is the NQ. I'm going to go back to the uh, Dow out here because the Dow is the one that is really suggesting a potential change in trend. So change in trend is going to require a close below both the bottom of the daily and the weekly profiles out there, just as it occurred back in February. We had some slight breaches, these yellow diagonal lines out here, some slight breaches back in the September, October time frame, and then a brand new daily profile came along from the bottom and restored that. So, uh, so John, the first level I'd be looking at, if the Dow Equity Future contract is trading above 34,276 tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m., then that would be suggesting that we uh, that the uh, action that we saw yesterday, the action that we might have today, was a false break to the downside. So that would be one of the first clues that I would look for. I know you're asking about the ES Mini. I'm taking a look at the markets in general and saying, okay, where would some signals come from? So here's what we know. No change in trend inside the NQ, the ES, or the Russell 2000. Only such a signal exists inside the Dow as we speak right now. So that would be the first place. Where else would we look? Well, um, here's where I would look. So I'm going to use the ES Mini because John was specifically asking about the ES Mini. So I'll get to that. And here, this set of charts, or this chart, not a set of charts, but this chart that I have up on my screen, this has just simply TD9 breakout levels. Those are red and TD9 breakdown levels. Those are green. Now, it's a 60-minute time frame. So I didn't have a, a ton of time before I went live, but I was surfing around, in essence, John, trying to answer that question myself, maybe in a different fashion. And what I was looking for are are time frames where it's very clear to me where the resistance levels are, where price gets up and fails. And this is a perfect time frame. And so the ES Mini, I believe, is really being controlled by the 60-minute time frame. So I see we've got Basil Chapman. He's uh, just uh, logged in. And much like riding a wave, his wave, or just the waves that I've got 450 yards off of my front door out there, you know, the flow of waves changes from time to time. And the same thing happens here inside the equity futures contract. So today or right now, it's a 60-minute chart. I might have a different feel uh, come tomorrow. And it may be a different time frame in the NQ and the YM. But since John asked about the ES Mini, it just so happened, how does that work? Life happens for you. I had already gotten this one figured out. So here's the answer to your question, John. You can see, so the green lines are resistance. So first, by the way, in bull markets, as as we continue to move higher, the bull market continues to remain as long as price doesn't take out its breakout level of support. And we can see that that has transpired, was transpiring all the way up until we got, let me get my cursor out here, up until we got into the time frame, little chinks in the armor right around here, around 2100 hours around September the 1st. Now, in a bear market, directly speaking, or just relative you know or, or an actual bear market out here all counter trend rallies are going to end at resistance the td9 breakdown levels out here so now i'll just pull this chart back a bit and we can see that there was a td9 breakdown level that formed up here at uh, for, at 40 at the price level of 44.77 and that was on september 14th now, I'm not showing the nine counts out here. I'm just showing the levels of resistance and support. And we can see how that first counter trend rally ran right in resistance at that TD9 breakdown level. Now, when you break the support areas, that tells you, okay, you're headed lower. So resistance is held. Support has failed this morning. So last night. We had a nice rally that was set up, as most of you know, you listened to the uh, show between one and two yesterday. We were taking a look at that spot follow till next one day rate of change. We then went and said, hey, look, if you've got some uh, roads momentum indicator or TD9 count bottoms on the 30 minute chart, that's what you're really looking for. And the price target to the upside was this 43.93 level. At least that's what we wrote in the evening edition of the Ma of the uh, Mastery Probability newsletter yesterday. And that way, those folks that were trading futures, which I have many uh, clients that do trade futures out there, they were able to use that. They were able to set it and forget it, so to speak. They got into a trade out there and they knew where to exit. Now, we were looking at the 30-minute time frame. It happens to match up, I believe, with the 60-minute time frame. So, John, the answer to your question, 
I think I've answered it, or the charts have answered it. If the ES Mini trades above 4393.75, I know your target was in the 4400 area, and so that's not much further above that. You, were, I think, you're also 4425 out there. Uh, then the answer would be uh, yes. I would expect that we would see some kind of rally to the upside, maybe some A to B equals CD. We don't have that in place as we speak right now, but most certainly this is what I would be watching to help answer that question for the ES Mini. And the levels to be watching here are 43.93 to the upside and 42.93 to the downside. Does that answer your question or the reasons uh, why I'm suggesting what I'm suggesting uh, here? So again, these are the TD9 breakdown that's the green line, and breakout areas for the 60-minute uh, time frame. See, we can take this chart here, and we can put it on different time frames. We can just simply go from 60. This is, again, I was just surfing around, taking a look at time frames out here. Here's the 30-minute time frame. And uh, so the 30-minute time frame just doesn't match up as well as that 60-minute with regard to identifying key levels of resistance, which would then offer us key levels of support. But here you can see the 4393.75 level, and that was the target that I gave to subscribers last night at uh, 5 o'clock, 5.30 or so. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to go out to Martinez, California, and speak with uh, Brent. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? 
I'm doing great, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so kind for asking. And I believe we're going to take a look at the QQQ Series ETF out here. Is that correct? Yeah, it's really just a follow-up on the conversation with, that we had yesterday. Okay. Um, I was able to get that trade in, and I, it was really helpful having the, the TAS profiles on the weekly for that Perfect. instrument Yes. on the NASDAQ. Yes. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, too, I mean, it's literally a you know, basically a two-hour trade because I bought in the last hour of trading yesterday and got out within the first hour of trading today. But Okay. Um, Excellent. One thing I did, yeah, and it ended up being a good trade. It was, you know, about an $8 range in price, a little more than that. But um, one thing I did uh, notice yesterday that I have seen in the past, and it doesn't always work, but it has a you know, pretty high percentage of working. So if you have directionally a, a – like yesterday, the market was down for the most part, but then there was a pretty big push in that. Uh, for me, it would be the 11 to 12, you know, range for you, I guess, two to three. Yes. So if it's it's before that last hour, that normally kind of plays out. You'll see it like around noon, it started to shift back the other way. And so then you have that, you know, final little push the other way in the last hour. And I've seen it the other way where the market's up most of the day. Yeah, sure. kind of a big push going into that. If you need to happen in that last hour if it's going to hold. Seems yes. to be that the, not always, but that often is the case. If it does it that hour earlier, then it doesn't always hold, and it'll kind of back off if it's going up. In this case, it kind of, you know, they had made the big push in that hour right before the market closed, and so then it already played out, and then you have a little push up towards that, that you know, final hour of the market. So. Sure. So the nice mention. thing about the nice thing about your observation, Brent, knowing that, is that uh, you know you can time you can go ahead and time this or try to time this or improve your timing, perhaps. Uh, and in this case here, I happen to show the thirty minute time frame chart. And so coming into that time frame, let's say the two thirty three, three thirty time frame, we had a TD nine count that formed. We had when it actually made its bottom, that TD nine count held. You had wave number seven, that's letter G. You had a Rhodes Mintum indicator uh, uh, buy pattern. That was a key reversal bar that took place at 330. So you had everything that you wanted with the price target of about the 15, 111 area. That was a TD9 count uh, breakdown uh, level. And so, uh, so you know, you can consider adding that uh, to the uh, pie now that T there was a TD9 count pattern that formed along the way last evening. And that provided us with a breakout support level of 14,981.75. Now, the ES Mini came back and tested that at 11 as well as at 11.30 out there. It's just trading right now between support and resistance. Support being the breakout level, resistance in essence being about the breakdown area out here. So I don't have much of a clue really as to what the uh, next move will be. And I think we have to watch these levels, the 14,981 and the 15,111 area. Now, I know you didn't ask for that, but I was just, you know, listening to what you were saying and uh, trying to figure, you know, how, how else can I provide you with something that might help to improve that so that uh, whether it's smart, whether it's that last hour you're looking for the market to decline or the market to move higher, you know, uh, see see if uh, if you get those type of uh, signals on those uh, short term time frame charts. Cause I know you, you I, I certainly know you follow the TD9 count out there. Um, yeah, very you know, the helpful. Other, Steve. What's that? Very helpful. Yeah. So the other interesting thing, and, and here's how I put it together with the cues. So the cues have this unique ability to form bottoms with big volume. So when you're so in addition to what you look at, when you're seeing a big volume day in the cues, whereas many people might say that's a confirmation that we're headed lower, I'd hearken to say, hey, hey, not so fast out here. If you take a look at uh, the last bottom that was made out here it was back on May 12th. The volume there was 91 million shares. Price was below the bottom of its profile. I guarantee you there were people swinging from the trees saying the markets are going to continue to move lower. No, that is not the way the queues actually work out here. They form bottoms with volume. Now, I noticed this probably about 10 years ago or so, and it still is the case. You had big volume on March the 4th. There was 139 million shares. The actual bottom came in on that uh, following uh, day. That was a test of that 139 million shares. So you got the nice test of that. Uh, and then yesterday was another one of those big volume days out here. Uh, when I say big volume, in comparison to you know your typical trading, yesterday was about 76 million shares. So I would just add that to your 
arsenal as well. Uh, and what you're looking for, what you want to see in order to get some type of at least relief rally or potential bottom out there is a large volume day. I would be less trust trusting with a lower volume day inside the queues out there. So just throw that out because I haven't really talked about that much over the past couple of years, really. Uh, but it is one of the signatures of how the queues make a bottom, typically. I've definitely heard you say that before. See, I've been listening to you for a long time. I used to listen to you back when you were on the show with Tom in the morning, so it's been a yes. long time. Yeah, those were great um, days for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the one other thing I was just going to throw out there, Steve, I can just listen to you off the air. Is that yeah. There's been times during the day where the uh, the VIX has had, you know, exceeded the 10% rate of change. Now it's not there at the moment, but if it were to close, you know, greater than that, what would be your thoughts about that? Well, the VIX actually, uh, you're referring to maybe a, a one-day rate of change below minus 10%? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, so right now we're down below minus uh, about minus 7% out here. And so the rule doesn't change. It's just like we had talked about, you and I yesterday, about the spot volatility index. Um, one day rate of change that was way up there. I don't remember yesterday what the close was, uh, but uh, and and that gets a blue arrow designation. You typically see a bouncer bottom. Right now we've had the bounce um, that we can say inside the S and P 500 inside the ES mini, um, and and so that works. Now the one day rates of change that are below minus 10 percent out there, those get these green arrows. Those turn into initiation moves. So if we were to see that, Brent, how I would put that together would be yet three of the four indices test and reject the weekly profiles. That tells us that the bullish picture still remains in effect for that. The Dow, mm, we're not certain. It's, it's out. Uh, we won't know that right now until Friday. But if you put that together with the high volume day that we saw in the queues, which is associated with bottoms in the queues, I'm not saying, folks, that works in the IWM or the spies or the diamonds. I'm absolutely not saying that. I am saying if you go take a look at every single bottom, again, I haven't done this for several years out there, I'm going to guess you're going to see, and it's not a big guess out there, you're going to see that those bottoms are formed with those big volume days out there. So, uh, and that gets back to John's question, John in the den. I don't know if you caught that during the first segment out here. Um, so if you got an initiation move signal, a a uh, spot volatility at a one day rate of change below minus 10 percent combined with the ES mini, then closing above 43.93.75, that key resistance level that we took a look at, then I would say that's a real clear signal of an initiation move to the upside. That's how I would look at it. Uh Okay, yeah, because I did see the the VIX was you know was minus eleven percent at one point. We'll just see where it yes. today. But I, yes. I appreciate that, Steve. Have okay. a great day. Take care. You bet, you bet. Thanks so much for calling. That was Brent in Martinez, California. We've got a request inside the Tiger's Den to go take a look at ticker symbol ICL, I believe it is. And uh, so we'll get that up on the screen here. This is the ICL group. And I believe the question was, is this an area to uh, get into? So right now we can see there is a new profile that formed yesterday. It's with inside the prior profile out here. So you've got a little bit of consolidation that's going on there, Peak. But we come back for this break. We'll finish looking at ICL Group Limited. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at this ticker symbol ICL, and I'm going to start with the longer term time frame and work our way back. So, what do we know about the longer term time frame? We know seven dollars and forty nine cents is a TD nine breakdown level. Price got back to that level the month of uh, June, was unable to clear it. Uh, what we see out here, so I believe, peak, you're a longer term. You're looking for a longer term view on ICL out there, and it's oscillator and change line changed colors back in uh, April. Of, uh, of this year. Typically, we see price and that line catch up to each other. And, uh, and knowing that resistance is held, I would say wait to see if this pulls back further. If I look at the weekly time frame chart out here, it's got a TD9 count top. It's just really resulted in a sideways move out here. But uh, knowing that the monthly chart has the patterns that it does, I'd wait to see if this pulls back. And if this pulls back, your entry prices are going to be between 612 and 654. That's coming off the weekly chart. On the daily time frame chart, I don't have anything with conviction to suggest that now would be the time that you would enter this uh, trade. And on the it doesn't trade that much, so the short term time frame charts don't really don't tell me anything. So I'm going to go with the uh, monthly time frame chart that says, you know what, just to hold on here for the moment and uh, be be a little bit more patient with uh, ticker symbol ICL out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for waiting. Now we've got four questions I see that have come in uh, by email. So let's just can uh, switch uh, charts out here and uh, change over to our uh, top and bottom, our eight panel uh, charts. Let me get my actual screen connected to this uh, page and then we'll start uh, firing away so the first question is coming from david h and david wants to take a look at netflix steve give me your short-term perspective on netflix based upon the charts you've got 570 put expiration this friday so you know short-term time frame we would take for example a 15-minute chart out here i don't know that that's the short-term time frame that you want uh, Netflix would need to close about 586.99 to suggest that this wants to run higher out there. So that's something to be paying attention to and looking at. We don't have that signal. On a 30-minute time frame out here for Netflix, it is uh, telling us what, Steve-O. It's got a nice TD9 count bottom that it formed, uh, but price is just trading with inside its uh, profiles here. Price would need to close about 591.53 to suggest that it's got upside momentum movement. It closed below yesterday's low. That says it's headed south. Now, that's just a 30-minute time frame chart out here. 65-minute uh, chart, I don't have anything to speak of there, so we won't pay any attention. I don't have anything on the 130, 195, nothing there to speak of. The daily time frame for Netflix shows that price is below the bottom of its uh, daily profile. And this is going to be, it looks like, two consecutive bars below that. 
So the daily time frame chart here, David, suggests that Netflix wants to pull back to its breakout area, and that's at 549.25. Now, I'm not saying it does that by Friday. I'm saying that that's what the current signal is to us. There are two other areas of support. 564, that's the weekly oscillator and change line. And on the monthly chart, for Netflix, that number is 565. So watch that 564 area. If price gets below that, David, that tells you that Netflix wants to run lower. So thanks so much for writing in. Hope that helps you out. Nancy writes in, and Nancy is a big Apple uh, trader out here. And uh, Nancy says, Apple made a low yesterday. Do you think that is the B point of a short-term AB equals CD down pattern? We're setting up for a gradual stair step upward trend. Hmm. Uh, good question. And let's see if we can uh, try to answer that. So here's what I would say, Nancy, and you're looking at yesterday's chart at the daily time frame, I believe. So if we take a look at yesterday's price action inside of Apple, it formed bar number seven of a TD9 count. So we know, and is there a completed A to B equals CD to the downside? The answer is no, there is not. In order to have a completed A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, the way that the market communicates that the move lower is likely over, you will see the cavalry come in. The cavalry means you will see some type of bullish reversal candle. Yesterday was a bearish candle. It was a gap to the downside in Japanese language that would be referred to as a falling window. No bullish reversal candle today, even if I could try to draw in some type A to B equals CD, which I really can't. Instead, I'm going to go with the TD9 count pattern. Now, today's going to be bar number eight, but it is not the low of the pattern. So you've got to see at least a push below yesterday's low. Don't have to see a close below it, just a push below it, either tomorrow on Wednesday or on Thursday. And if you do that, then you would get a bottoming signal inside of Apple. So short of that, because price is trading below its uh, daily profile, Apple says that it wants to target 137.75, its breakout level. Now, that's a daily time frame. The weekly time frame shows us what? The weekly time frame shows us a road momentum indicator top that was confirmed with that bearish engulfing candle. I also happen to have wave number seven out here, letter G. In either event, we have price below the oscillator and change line. Right now, it's just below the bottom of its weekly profile. And this too, Nancy, is suggesting lower price. If I look at the monthly time frame chart, the monthly time frame chart is the one that's saying, hey, I am the cavalry. We are Marshall." Or I guess in, they now also say we are Penn State. I like the we are Marshall because they got the better story. In any event, the story here for Apple is that price is pulling back and it is tested and so far rejected that oscillator and change line. That is currently priced. So that is the last bastion of support, 142.20. The price would need to close below, Nancy, to suggest those lower price targets that we looked at on the daily and weekly. Now, let's not finish there. Let's just look at a short-term time frame chart out here. For example, the 30-minute chart. So as the NQ, as Brent and I were taking a look at a 30-minute chart for the NQ, Apple was doing something similar. It formed wave number seven. It formed a TD9 count bottom. It formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom out here. Now, on a short-term basis, what Apple is communicating to you and I is that if price can close above 144.42, that is the top of its current profile, the bottom of that current profile is 143.14. I don't think there's a center, or the center might be at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, I take that back. The, center, the bottom is 143.14. The center is 143.87. The top is 144.42. We're focused on 144.42. If price closes above that, Nancy, Apple, in the very short term, is going to go make a run for 146.78. And if it can close above 146.78, you have more rally. Does it mean that it bottomed? Not necessarily. Uh, could have. Uh, but I don't have the bottoming signals on that daily time frame chart. Uh, so that's the review of Apple. We take a look at uh, its different time frame charts out there. And I hope that that helps you out, Nancy. Thanks so much for writing in and best of luck to you uh, on your uh, trade or trading out here. Next question coming in from Hector. Hector and the fuel injector. Hey, Patty, how are you doing? Happy Twofer Taco Tuesday. I'm with you. NVIDIA and CVX. So let's go take a look at NVDA. And uh, which looks the strongest to ride from here until Christmas? So uh, why isn't this uh, loading? There we go. It's just taking time to load out there. Now, that's a tough question. I think it's a tough question, but we're going to try to answer it or try to answer it as best we can. So in the case of NVIDIA, I'm going to look at the daily time frame chart out here. 
And on a daily basis, this forms a Rose momentum indicator top. So that's the pattern that's out there. Price of yesterday closed below the bottom of its daily profile, but it's back up above its day, suggesting that maybe it was a false breakdown. So right now, Hector, this is suggesting just a consolidation type move with inside its profile levels out there. If price did close today below the 211.77 mark, that would be day number two below the bottom box. And that says NVIDIA would head to 199.33. We're going to a hard breakout here. We get back from this message. Stevie will try to figure out which is the better buy, NVIDIA or CBX. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the ticker symbol NVIDIA. Hector's question is uh, between NVIDIA or CBX, which looks the strongest to ride from here till Christmas? You know, I, Hector, I'd really like to answer that question when I know that we've made a bottom in the market. That's still open to potentially not taking place until October. But what we do like about NVIDIA, uh, no topping signal on the monthly chart price above the oscillator and change line. Price on the uh, weekly time frame, what we don't like is price right now is trading just below the bottom of a new weekly profile. And that's at uh, profile levels at uh, 213, was it? That's 213.22. And if price closes below that, yikes, I don't know where price heads to. Well, I do. Price heads to 199.33. 
Uh, there was also another question, I think, about NVIDIA from Rich, and he was asking whether or not yesterday was a TD9 count bottom. The answer is no. Yesterday was bar number three of that count. So uh, I like NVIDIA's setup out here. Not necessarily today, but I do like its setup. Let's switch over and take a look at uh, CVX's charts out here. Well, uh, yeah, i got to stop sharing there and go to the main screen and then get to another set of charts out here which will take just a moment and we'll pull over CVX. So remember, in the case of CVX or NVIDIA on the monthly chart, what we liked was that price was above its green oscillator and change line without any kind of topping signal. Here, I've got a red oscillator and change line. And yes, price is above it, but green is mean. It's the what you want to see out there. So already on a monthly basis, I like NVIDIA. On a weekly basis, this too is below the bottom of its uh, weekly profile. So this could be targeting lower price. And in the case of the daily time frame. Um, you know, a nice road momentum indicator bottom, just sideways consolidation move. So, Hector, because you're pinning me down here, I'm going to go with NVIDIA as the uh, place. Uh, U-B-E-R. I don't know if this will populate uh, in the next uh, 10 seconds, uh, but really you're going to hear the music start just about now. So, uh, Terry, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get to Uber for you, but uh, if you'd be kind enough... Tomorrow, no, you got to hey, so this got a nice road momentum indicator bottom. This is the daily time frame. Additional follow through today. Uber headed to 5103. Terry, we got it in for you. Hope that uh, works out. Hey, everybody, have a terrific, uh, have a terrific Tuesday, and I'll see you tomorrow on Wonderful Wednesday.